Welcome back to Amber Unabridged. Mild language in this video. Today I am going to be talking to you about We the Drowned by Karsten Jensen, who is a Danish author, or just likes to write about Denmark. This video is going to contain spoilers. I'm also using this book as my genre fiction in translation for my Book Write Read Harder Challenge as a, you know, seafaring novel, which I'm assuming is a real thing. Erica? Yeah? I'm gonna be drinking OG tea infused wit beer today because it's got Godzilla on it and he lives in Tokyo Bay and that has really nothing to do with the story at all whatsoever. I just like the beer. This is a book set in a coastal town, uh, well, I think it's like an island town called Marstall in Denmark. And it looks like it's pronounced Marstall, but I listened to the audiobook, so I'm just gonna go ahead and believe the guy who narrated it and that he knows what, what was up. I certainly don't know anything about Denmark. Although, after this book, I am actually very intrigued to learn a little bit more about Scandinavia. There's a couple main characters in this book, but the most consistent character throughout the entire book is the town of Marstall. We follow kind of, it uh, starts in like the 1800s at some point. It's about sailors. Ooh. There's this group of guys, these sailors, they go off to fight the Germans before World War I. I didn't track the timeline in this book terribly closely and like I said I don't even remember when it starts. So one of the guys that goes off to fight the Germans, his name is Loritz. Loritz. And he has these boots. At one point when the Germans like blow up the boat that he's on, he flies up in the air and everybody's like, oh my gosh, everybody's dead. Nope, Loritz lands on his freaking boots right there on the deck and he's like, oh my, I totally died and came back because I saw St. Peter's ass. So if you ever see St. Peter's ass, then you probably have come back from the dead. It continues on, it talks about how Loritz, um, as a sailor, how he, when he traveled the world, he learned a bunch of different languages and he was really interested in America. He would speak English to his, to his kids at home and then his son Albert grew up speaking some English. Loritz just kind of lost his damn mind and peaced out Girl Scout and just never came back. We learn a lot about when he's in school. The kids are taking revenge on their teacher for things because he's abusive as all get out. But then they kill his dog. I don't know what the f I don't know why they do that. That's unnecessary and cruel. So Albert grows up and he's a sailor now. Because all the little boys wanted to grow up and be sailors just like their dad. And he's got this first mate on a ship and this first mate's just like the teacher. But then instead of getting revenge and killing the guy's dog, even though he doesn't have one, he's all like the whole crew was trying to kill him. But he's like, no, no, guys, let's just like turn him into the law. And so then they do and then he gets imprisoned for five years. So that's cool, I guess. So then he decides that he wants to find his father because he believes that his father's alive. So he goes to find him, and then he does. He's on some like tropical island, eating coconuts, living in a coconut tree occasionally. He'd married a native woman, and they'd had a bunch of kids, and he named them after all of his Danish kids' names. And Albert's like, dude's kinda crazy. And then Lawrence was like, give me my boots. And Albert's like, no. While he's on this journey, he ends up traveling with this guy who happens to have the shrunken head of James Cook, which is apparently a big deal, and I did not understand the single significance of his obsession with the shrunken head the entire time. So anyway, um, he's an adult, nothing really happens. Uh, <laughs> other than that, then he's an old man. Um, he meets this widow with uh, a, a little boy, and she's pregnant, and because um, her husband just died. He starts kind of hanging out with them, because a friend of his was just like, hey, She's lonely and you're lonely and you guys can all hang out and like have somebody to talk to and not be alone all the time. And so then, but then they sort of become a family. Like he sort of acts like the grandfather in the family. Like, but then like she definitely comes on to him and like some things happen. And then she basically like cons him into proposing to her. And that's just a whole lot of drama. 
eventually he ends up dying after he sees all of these visions of like tragedy and war and the little boy that he was hanging out with ends up growing up and he ends up becoming a sailor and then you follow him on his adventures. I don't actually remember a whole lot at that point. I stopped taking notes. And there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in this, uh, in this book. So <laughs> the whole town is a character and they tell the story. It, I love the way that it connects all of the generations throughout the course of the narrative. And even when the people are throughout the world, they're still connected to their hometown. And it keeps referring back to previous generations, like what happened before, what came before, what set them up in the past is still in the present. And I love that. Another really cool thing the book does, you get to watch time pass, you get to watch technology uh, develop, and you get to watch things change through the eyes of this entire town. It goes from a sailing culture with sails and, and masts and wooden ships to steamboats. It's a really fascinating um, progress to watch happen as people are adjusting to the way that the world is changing and the way that the entire world is adapting to this new seafaring technology. I did hear about this book from Erica over at Perks of Books and as soon as I saw her talk about it like a year ago or whenever I was like that looks really cool I need to read it. So I did. I really enjoyed this book. It was hefty. I don't know what the page count is, but I think because I listened to the audiobook, I think it was something like 32 hours. It was, it was up there, but I really enjoyed all of it, the whole thing. It moved a little slow, but it was always really interesting. I had really no idea where it was going to be going until it got there, and that was really neat. Highly recommend it. Definitely go check it out. If you haven't subscribed to Erica, I'll leave her channel link down below. You should go check her out because she's awesome and just reads a lot of cool shit. If you hit up my Goodreads, I've got a pretty significant backlog that I haven't talked about. So if you have anything that you would like me to talk about, please, please, please check on my Goodreads. See what looks interesting. Comment down below and I will get on that. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember to always read responsibly.